Another video, this time about an EG4 server rack battery. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in, Jeff Ferris on Hat Homestead. Today we got a EG4 batteries that we're going to hook up today. I've actually got one hooked up right now. I've got a second one. We're going to set that up and then I'll show you both of them together. And then I got a battery monitor and etc. So I'll show you that as well. Um, probably in a separate video on that one. Um, just because you know how my videos are. They always take forever. So, 100 pounds. Good thing I got a dolly to move it around. Comes with a communications cable. This cable here is just to uh, parallel the batteries up. Some bathroom literature. This is the battery I got. Yes, there's some inspection report there. I've already taken this guy here off. Those are my old batteries. Now get this. Those are Rolls Surrettes. Um, 465 amp batteries and there's eight of them and two of the and it's equivalent to about 230 lithium at 48 volt because I had those wired at 24 volt so we're going to go 48 volt and 200 amps so I'm just 30 amps shy of what that battery bank was each one of those is 130 pounds this one's only a hundred. That's why you do lithium. All right, so let's get this out of the box. What I learned on the first one was go ahead and take these guys out first. To go ahead and take off four of them, that loosens it up a little bit, and then and then you can pry this thing up. So then I stood it up on its side, and I was able to reach down here and grab these handles, and then I basically just walked it out. So there's that information there for those of you who would like to see it. Got my two negatives, breaker, there's the on off, a couple more positives, my state of charge, run alarm reset, and then your screen. And then Looks like over here is where you do your communications cable. There's some more communications cables. Ground right there. Now these protective covers for this, they're very, they're a necessity, but I can tell you this, they come off so easy that be careful. Just be careful. Look for these because you don't want to break them because all they are is just plastic but yeah they they it'd be nice if these were maybe put into a bag with the uh, communications cable or something because they when they fit on here and you're trying to take the battery out they come off so anyhow this is the battery Let's just go ahead and turn it on real quick and let's look at the state of charge and look at that 54%. So you've got to, what I like to do or what I did on the other one, I'm going to do it on this one, is we're going to charge this one up 100% so that this one and the other one is basically about the same. My other one is already a, at 98%. See, this is my other one. And see it's at 99% so we're going to have to get this one charged up and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set this one as the primary and by the way I'm going to do another video about this but I have a major complaint about these but I'll do that in, in the next video I'll put this in place and then I'm going to turn that one off and have the other one on so that we can get this one charged up and then they'll both be about the same in a couple of hours and then once they are then then we'll turn them both on and that way they'll both be equally charged and we'll go from there so I like these handles because they move 
If it wasn't for these handles, I probably could not have gotten it out of the box. To turn it on and off, I just pressed the on off button for a second or two and let go. It's 100 pounds, so now I gotta lift it up over my my heating box and get it in there up close to that. And I'll show you a video on this heating box here in a little bit. So the two batteries are hooked up. But here's the deal. Because this one's already at 99% and this one is at 54%. And what I kind of like is that you just got to touch those buttons and it comes on. Well look at that, it's already up to 55%. It's charging at 27 amps because I do not have any loads hooked up currently at, at all. Now the way I have this done is this battery is turned off. This battery is the only one running. So my, my line goes into the top one there, the bottom one comes over here to the top one. And over here, I've got the negative, the bottom to the top, and then the negative goes up to the inverter. So I'm basically using this battery kind of as a bus bar for the positive part. Just so I can get this guy here charged up to about 99% or so. If I can get that guy charged up, look at that 27 amps going in there, that's, that's beautiful. So there's my inverter showing all that. So just to go over briefly on my wiring, got my solar coming in, going into here. These guys here come down to a bus bar there and a bus bar over here. And then they're coming down to the battery. And then these lines here, one of them goes to, let's see, this one here goes to the AC box. And then this one here goes to my generator. And I just have a 7500 watt dual fuel generator. Now these other lines I have on here, they actually go over here to a fuse box. And that's a uh, converter, so com or not a converter, but a step down. So it steps it down from 48 volts down to 12 volts and then this here is my 12 volt box and it goes to some lighting in here and then it also goes out there. So basically I have this line here going down, looping around, going to a bus bar because I also have the lines going there going into the house and I have the exact same setup here as I do over there. This is just my main cutoff switch for this 12 volt stuff or 48 volt slash 12 volt stuff here. And this here is my shunt for my battery monitor. I don't have the battery monitor hooked up right now. I'm kind of using this just as a bus bar type of thing. So now it has stopped charging because the green light's not flashing. Now when I come into here now look at this new battery that I put on. It says it's at 100%. So now here's what we got to do. Now I've got to set up the communications cable. So we're going to shut down everything. And what I have to do, according to the EG4 instructions, I have to set this one to a, a certain dip switch so that this can recognize this inverter and then once I do that, cycle the power off and back on, reset that and all that, but I'll show you that. So this is the AC, power that off. I'm going to turn off the panels, turn off the inverter, and then we're going to, let's turn this off. And then let's turn this off. Now, everything is off. Now, what I'm going to do is, they say on doing this, you want to make sure that the voltage, that there's no residual voltage. So I'm just going to let it sit here for a few minutes. But they, you want to make sure that there's zero voltage in the positive and negative lines. What this is telling me is that I have to set it to... 64 so see this is the part that's stupid I shouldn't have to do this this should be automated 
that's 64 so that's all of them moved over to the right see I shouldn't have to do this the system should do it for me and then follow these instructions I'm going to use this RS-485 protocol setting now it doesn't show the power mister but the power mister is very similar to the grow watt so I'm just going to line it up with the grow watt and then we'll do this and then we reset those dip switches back to one turn it off and then I think you turn it off first don't you yeah turn it off now change it and then turn it off god there's so many steps this is dumb for stupid people like me all right so I got all these here set so we turn this sucker on And then we hold this guy down for a few seconds. Protocol. Enter. Okay, I've already moved it to grow watt. So yeah, you can just move this up and down. And then you, this one over here is the inner. And then you return it. And then you gotta move. It says to do this first, right? Okay, so we move that guy and then we turn him off. Okay, so we should be set. So I've got this is my ground, this is my RJ4485 or whatever the heck it's called. Goes down here, connects up to that one. Then I've got my battery communication the bottom one there to the top one here and I think it's ready to go let's uh let's turn these guys here on All right so now that we've got that protocol set on that primary battery I've got the dip switches set I've set this one here to number two like the book says so now we're going to turn this battery here on Let it run its course with this. Okay. Then I'm going to flip this on. Okay. Then we're going to turn this one on. Let it do its thing here. So it's on. Then we're going to flip this one. So now both of those are on. Okay, now, now we're going to go to the inverter and we're going to turn him on and we're going to let him cycle through his deal. Some more stuff is going to flash here in a second. There we go. So now we have all that stuff. So now it's basically saying it's ready to handle the load and we'll go to the AC in my distribution box Ugh. so now now we should definitely be discharging some stuff alright so we got everything going except for the solar in so let's do the solar in And now we got solar coming in because the batteries are like 99% it's not charging plus whatever load I have on is just pulling straight from the solar right now probably oh yep yeah, got a little bit of charging in there so it's providing the load and giving me a little trickle charge basically cool so like for example when I look at this guy See, he says he's charging. And then this guy here should say he's charging. Charging current, 14. 
So what it's doing right now is it's equalizing these batteries. So it's getting this one here up to 100% and it should be equalizing them. So I am set. I've got two of them going. Now let's just hope that everything continues to go well. I really hate these dip switches by the way. If, if anyone has connections to server work batteries, EG4, whatever, that's old technology. The computer inside this thing should do it all for me. I shouldn't have to do that. Sorry, that's a pet peeve. I'm all set. Now I guess I gotta hook up my battery monitor. And we're good to go. That's it for this video. I got both batteries hooked up. 48 volts. 100 amp each one. So now I got 200 amp. Growth through my 5000 watt power mister. Thanks for tuning in. Jeff Rosen out on Homestead. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you. Bye. Have fun.